In this video, I show you some 3D terrain options for Townsfolk Tussle. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of January of 2022, we have this printed and painted k -Wald modular sci-fi terrain, as well as three pledges for this current Kickstarter. We also have these three boxes from the Archon Studios Rampart 3rd Kickstarter that is also going on right now. Three patrons will also be chosen for $30 credit towards the level 427 store where they can pick up terrain. And finally, we're gonna have $100 going towards our crowdfunder, which is still gonna be voted upon. If you wanna check out the list, go ahead and go to my Patreon page using the link below, and you can check out all the details there. Townsfolk Tussle was a game that I was really looking forward to, and it delivered a couple of weeks ago. And I'm excited about it because our game group really likes playing Kingdom Death Monster. But this is a simplified form where you're basically going through four different what they call ruffians or bosses in one evening rather than having a whole campaign that you are running through. Now overall, I do enjoy the game, but just one thing to note, like a lot of other reviewers have said, the game is very swingy and it is very luck based. So sometimes the ruffian, you're gonna have a very easy time with them because the rolls are gonna go your way and other times it's very difficult. So as long as you don't mind that swinginess and our game group is actually used to that, Kingdom Death Monster is super swingy and luck based. So this is actually less depressing than a lot of the bad luck that we had with Kingdom Death Monster. You can check out a bunch of other reviews if you wanna know more about the gameplay details. But suffice to say, as soon as I opened up this box, I knew right away that I wanted to make 3D terrain because it just screams needing 3D terrain. But before I show you each one of the pieces that I was able to print out or proxy in, I just wanna share two pro tips just to make uh, life easier playing this game. The first is the box that stores all of the cards. Remove the plastic insert that came in the bottom box and throw this bottom box away and put it in the top box because there isn't enough room to fit all of the cards and I don't even sleeve my cards and it wouldn't fit in. So just throw away the bottom box, use the top box, you don't even need a cover for it. The storage system in the main box is relatively good. So that's pro tip number one. Pro tip number two is that because we're gonna be using the miniatures, use the standees as your turn markers rather than these tokens. Might as well use these because I don't know why anyone would choose to use these on the board rather than the miniatures that come with the game. And the miniatures are fantastic. I had a fun time painting these up. I do have a very quick just painting guide. It's not really a tutorial at the end of the video just to show you how I painted up my miniatures. And I only show you a few of them just to give you an idea and what kind of options you might have painting these up. But they're relatively easy because they're very cartoony but I was very impressed with the quality of the models. And in fact, I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't offer 3D terrain as part of the set. And maybe they will offer that because they're gonna have a second Kickstarter later in this year of 2022. I'm not exactly sure what month it's gonna be, but if you missed out on getting this game, go ahead and wait um, whenever the second Kickstarter is gonna come out and possibly they might have 3D terrain in that second Kickstarter. I hope that they do, but who knows what they're gonna do. In the meantime, even if they do have that 3D terrain, it might be an add-on that might be expensive. So this is a great way to just save some money, especially if you have a 3D printer. I 3D printed out all of these objects, except for the car, because I couldn't find a jalopy STL file. So instead I just bought this $1 matchbox and I'll show you more close-ups for all of these. But everything else was 3D printed and it was sort of a smorgasbord of different STL files, ones that I currently did have, other ones I had to actually purchase through my mini factory online. So I do have links that's gonna be available in the descriptions below to all of these files if you are interested in getting them. There is one file that is available that I customized and I sort of mashed together uh, this little model from Zykit, and he gave me permission to be able to post it so that it is free for all of you. But all of these other ones, I did have to modify some of them. And again, I will go through each one of them in detail. But overall, I think the immersiveness is so much more improved 
just by having this 3D terrain. I mean, look at this board. Look how amazing it looks, especially when you have these really colorful miniatures that have been painted up. It just provides so much more immersiveness and fun to the game. And you know me, I'm all about immersion. I'm all about creating uh, the best 3D boards that you can for board games and not just this game. So check out my other 3D builds that I've made in my channel video list. So let's go ahead and I will show you each individual piece. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the wishing well. This one's relatively simple. There are a ton of well STL files that are out there and for free. This one is from Zykit's set. And I actually did a review of this set, but I printed this out for 75% size so that it was smaller and it actually fit this two by two. And as you can see here, the drawing on the card is different than what is on here. I decided to go with this olive uh, green on top, although here it shows that it's gray, but it doesn't really matter. You get the idea, it is a well, and I think that one looks super cool. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the vegetable patch. And this one, again, was relatively easy. And a ton of these files with these small squares in them does come from the same set of files. And as you can see here, I actually do lay down the tile for the vegetable patch and a bunch of other ones here. I lay it down and then I put this on top because on some of these spots, you can put miniatures and they will stand on top of them, especially the single ones. But on other ones, it's a little bit harder, especially these pumpkins, it won't stand on the pumpkin. So if worse comes to worse, you can just remove it completely when someone goes into the feature. So you can just have this cosmetically here, and then when someone actually goes in, then you can just have remove it and have them step in. Alternatively, you can take these off individually and do what I did with the trees and move them around as needed. But I feel like with this, as well as with the mushroom patch, it's just easier to pick up the whole thing, remove it in order to place one of the miniatures. Like I mentioned before, this is sort of a Frankenstein project where I took Zykit's um, outhouse actually from his most recent Kickstarter. And then I added these logs across the top to create something that does look similar to this tool shed. And I think this works super well for that. And um, there is a lot of ways that you can create this waterway. I haven't quite figured out the best way to do it yet, especially when you flip this over, it's a ditch. So I'm still trying to figure that out. But in the meantime, we do have over here a bridge. And this is a modified bridge that I used from printable scenery. And I actually had to digitally cut it in order to make it this short. It's super short and then I had to blow it up. I don't remember how much I blew it up in order to make it fit. I don't like it 100% because these poles are so big. They sort of get it in the way of the miniatures actually standing there. So I'm hoping that there will be a better option in the future. But for now, I think this bridge works fine. This one's really simple. I found this barrel in Thingiverse and basically you start off with it upside down with it covered. And then when you actually search the barrel, you can turn it over like this to show that it was already searched. So this is super easy to be able to print that one out. Same thing with this fence. There's a lot of different fences that are out there. I already had this STL file from, again, Printable Scenery, and it just so happened that it was exactly the right length. So I had already printed this out previously, and it happened to fit fine. You need two of these because there's two of these terrain features. One of my favorite terrain features is right here, the Buzzing Hive, and I found this model on Thingiverse. I just love it because um, you can stick these little bees that come with the STL set and you can stick them onto these paper clips to make them look like they, they're flying around. So I think this is a perfect option. And then the wings, you I just cut up little pieces of clear plastic that are from like cases or something like that, you know, that come with toys or miniatures, cut them out and you can glue them in. It's supposed to be slotted to be glued in like that as well. Over here, we do have the Rickety Farm. This model is actually from True All Commons Kickstarter, but you can actually purchase these now. And I had to shrink this down. Again, I think it was 75%. I did glue the top onto the base. It doesn't exactly look like a barn, but it was the closest that I could come up with. And it was a file that I already owned and I already had. So just painted up white and red, and I think it works fine for this project. 
Here are the mushrooms. Again, this is also like the pumpkin patch or the garden. This is also from Azar Games. So there's a lot of versatility that's found there. I did modify these files a little bit because there was only two different kinds of mushrooms and it looked too much the same. So I moved some of the mushrooms around using Microsoft 3D Builder and just to give it a little bit more variety. But again, um, I kept all of them together and just place it right here. Miniatures, uh, the big ones can stand on there, but the small ones cannot. They will fall over. So in order for them to stand, you do have to remove it and place them onto the cardboard. Moving right along, here is the Docs Hut. And again, this is also from Azar Games. I took it, I sliced it off of the base, which is one of these uh, four by four grass bases, and I had to blow it up. I don't remember what percentage I increased the size. But this was one, um, and it doesn't really look like this hut here, the original, I couldn't find a square building. So I just painted it up and colored it the way that uh, this uh, model looks here. And then I added the first aid cross onto it. Again, you, using Microsoft 3D Builder. Over here is the forest. And for a long time, I was trying to figure out how to have all of the trees be one level so that you could stick a model on top and you would be able to do that for the whole forest. But then I realized, oh, I didn't have to do that. I can just print these out. Again, these are from Azar Games, part of their fantasy set. And when a model moves into a space, you can just remove one of the trees or move the trees around in order for the models to move into the forest. Again, you wanna keep this cardboard part down at the bottom so that you know what squares that the um, forest is covering. But you can move these around and then when a larger figure moves in, you know, you can just move some of the trees out of the way uh, for gameplay and I think that works fine. Here is a model that I had to pay just individually in order to get this. This is from my mini factory and it does come with a pitchfork along with a couple other tools. But what I did was um, I just sized it so that it would fit two by three rectangle and also glued on this pitchfork, colored it green because that's what's on there. I just stuck another one next to it and just shrunk it down just so that it was a different size. And I think this is a simple solution works out really great. This file outhouse is from Thingiverse, so it is free. Again, links for all of these are in the descriptions below. The door does open, but this is a very simple outhouse. And I did have to resize it. I'm not quite sure what size in order to make it fit. I think I did make it a little bit bigger and that works out great. And then the final piece, like I mentioned before, is the car. There was no jalopy um, car STL file that I could find. But I was at Walmart and I saw this and I thought, oh, it's about the same color and it's like a 55 or a 57 Chevy. So I just went ahead and picked this up for a dollar. But I do wish that there was a 3D printable STL file for something like this. So if you are someone who can digitally sculpt, it would be awesome if you can provide that. But this Matchbox actually fits the size of this two by three really, really well. So that's one of the options that you can have. So there you have it, all of my 3D printed models. Now there are some pieces that I have not yet found any STL files and I'm not entirely sure how to go about doing it. So if you do have ideas, go ahead and go over to my BGG post that I made where I asked the community whether or not they knew of any STL files that might be able to work for these pieces that are currently missing. And also I'm actually working with some 3D modelers with the possibility that they might be able to make a set so that you don't have to go searching all over these different places to pick up these pieces or to shrink them down or to blow them up because I had to modify a lot of these files to make them work. So just stay tuned. Uh, again, in the comments below, I will make a, a pin a comment if that project ends up happening where you can get all of your files in one place. Hopefully this inspires you to go ahead and paint up all of your miniatures as well as try out some of this 3D terrain. Again, stick around if you want just a couple of hints in how you might go about painting these miniatures. Otherwise, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time. All right, so all of my miniatures are spray painted with black. This is just Rust-Oleum Ultra two times ultra cover, uh, flat black, so nothing super fancy. So I did the whole thing, and what I'm gonna experiment with is to try to do a brush on Zenithal with just craft paint here. And the reason why I'm not doing my usual where I'm spray painting with a rattle can to do a Zenithal highlighting, Zenithal just means a spring from the top so that the black stays underneath and provides shading 
is because I want to because these are more cartoony I want to maintain sort of dark lines in between all of the different parts and components and when you when you are um, spray painting or using an airbrush to do your zenithal you're losing most of the black edges on these and to be honest I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm going to be able to maintain the black edges even with a brush but let's just try it this is an experiment let's try it and see if it works out the way that I imagine or want it to and if this doesn't work then I might just have to abandon the zenithal aspect of undercoating and just go with um, painting directly on black which isn't the end of the world I've, I've done that before in fact I created a video where I show painting over black as a shortcut for speed painting but let, let's see how this turns out if whether or not this is just more trouble than it's worth and I would have been better off just doing my typical uh, highlighting with just a rattle can coming from above. This gives me obviously a little bit more control over where the paint goes. So I'm maintaining some of the black but this undercoating is really light. So I'm going to go over especially the feathers which is supposed to be white and see if I can get a lighter blend. But initially you can see here that I am maintaining some of the black especially around the eyes you can see. If I would have um, spray painted this I would have just blasted out all of the black even around his um, what's this thing called on chicken or roosters this red thing up here. I would have completely just blasted that out with the white and you wouldn't be able to see this black edge in between and then especially the eyes I'm still maintaining the black around the eyes so that's what I mean when I say I want to maintain the black because when you look at cartoons or things that are really cartoony there is a heavy line distinct line of black that goes around um, distinguishing each of the colors so that's what I'm shooting for so I'm going to keep working on this adding successive layers until I get the light color that I want because we're, we're putting white on black it will take um, a couple of coats but so far I'm liking what I am seeing why is there a letter down here on the ground is that part of the lore of this. So I'll go ahead and do the ground as well. Might as well. Like so. So this will give you an idea of how much I um, just brushed over the white on this and I do like that there's still quite a bit of black still distinguishing between the different parts and components. And then let me show you on one of the bosses. It might be a little bit easier to see but I had to go through the top layers where the light is going to be hitting it the most. You know maybe about five times. Um, and you can see there's still lines of black around it and it's not entirely smooth you can definitely see the brush strokes still but that's what you're gonna have with when you're using a brush obviously you're gonna have strokes like that so this is again I think a little bit better than just spray painting from the top down where you lose all of these features, you lose all of these black lines. So let's see what it looks like with paint on it. So first I'm sticking with my white but I got a smaller brush so that I have a little bit more control over it and what I'm going to do is just lighten up 
the areas and sort of fine tune. Since um, this is the base color of white on this character, I'm using these as reference points. So this is what I'm going to take a look at. And I'm just going to tighten up just the areas so that there isn't a fade where I don't want one. And you'll notice there is mold lines, which I didn't take care of before I put the paint on. But that This just helps with firming up the black lines. And then see how this left eye is a little bit fuzzy. So I'm just going to add a little bit more white just to darken it up or to lighten it up. There. I might have to go back with a black right in the iris there on that side. And across the top here, just going to lighten that up and then blend it down. So I still want to maintain some of the shading that the previous step provided. So I'm not doing the entire model like this, but just cleaning it up in areas. So even back here. So this black line up here actually is bigger than it needs to be. So I'm going to clean that up. Like so. Alright, so I think his white feathers looks pretty good there. Using pure red. I'm going to be using Army Painter as well as Reaper Miniature Paints, but any paints will work that you might have. And I am going to experiment with contrast colors, but because this is the cartoony style, a lot of places I just want a solid color. And this is where I'm just going to not bother with shading or anything like that. And that's why I'm not necessarily using contrast colors here. Although I could because I want a solid red. That's why um, I'm going with regular paints rather than going with contrast colors. And it's actually good to have the white undercoating because red is super hard to paint over black. You can do it, but typically I have to put down a layer of pink in order for the red to show up or else you're just going to be doing layer after layer of red trying to get it to show up on black. Just so that you can see the difference, I'll go ahead and use Blood Angels Red on this big guy since this whole shirt is red and you will see just sort of the difference. This is definitely an option for you. So this is pretty much the difference between using contrast colors and regular paints. I know that it's going to be hard to see, but this is more solid red. Even though some of the shading from underneath the undercoat can be seen, it's just more of a solid red. It, it's really obvious on this that it's more splotchy because contrast colors is like that. So this is not going to be as solid of a red. So that's really the main difference between the two. So it's really up to you. I mean, since we were going through the trouble of doing the brushing on the undercoating, contrast colors might be the way to go if you want to see more of the undercoating. But entirely up to you. Iron and yellow.
See how splotchy the contrast color ended up being? When you have large surface areas like this character, you're going to notice how splotchy it is. Whereas when you have these really small characters, it is less splotchy or less noticeable. So using contrast colors on broad flat areas like this isn't the best idea. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint over this with the regular red that I used before. It will still show some of the splotchiness, but it will hopefully even it out a little bit more. I'm going to be using these two craft paints, avocado and light avocado, to do all of the bases, except for ones where it is clearly stone or something else. I'm going to have to do multiple coats in order to cover up the black and have an even coat. See how much smoother this is with that red on there? And I had to do two coats in order to smooth it out like that. I still wanted, you know, shading underneath, so I left that uh, darker. But overall, I'm more satisfied with this color. The light avocado isn't light enough, so I'm just adding a little bit of white to it just to lighten it up. Because of that, you don't need the light avocado. You can just add white to the um, regular avocado. Just touching it up just a little bit. So she is pretty much done and looks very close to the artwork. I'm using Golden Blonde for his face. Alien purple for his hat. I'll have to do two coats, so I'll wait for this to dry. I'm grabbing my auburn shadow. I'm going to do his gloves and his shoes. I'm using Williamsburg blue for the pants. I'm going to mix some white with the purple that I used earlier to create a lighter shade of it. Here's some slate gray. I'm going to try Black Templar just because I do want a little bit of variation on the belt, but I might change my mind and use black instead if it's too splotchy. I'm going to grab some silver.
I forgot to do the belt buckle with the ironed in yellow.